Back with us on the Sports Mag Zone, we continue our discussion with 23-year-old record boy Tyreek McGee. He has been speaking to us about his career since leaving Jamaica in 2019 for UPEN in the Belgian Pro League. Just in case you are wondering, UPEN founded in 1945 in Belgium. They've never been top flight champions, three times runners-up in the second division. They've been a third division champions three times and they've been champions of the fourth division in Belgium twice as well and they are a uh, bona fide top flight club. Uh, McGee, uh, Tyreek, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still Yeah, good. All right. So you've been at UPEN for a while. You've been exposed to a higher level of preparation than you were prepared for coming out of your Jamaica experience. Uh, what, it, what, what it is that you think needs to happen for you to take the next step to become a starter week in, week out for UPEN and then to move on from there? Um, I feel like I'm, like, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I feel like I'm doing everything in my power, like, everything that I can do as a football player. I just feel like, like, you now, like, whenever I get my opportunity, I, I just have to take it. That's all. Like, yeah, I just feel like I just need chances. That's all I need. Nothing else. Yeah. In terms of your integration with the squad and your your feeling, because players are in an environment sometimes where you don't feel as if the people around you trust you as a footballer. You don't feel as if your teammates are confident that if you if I give it to McGee in tight spaces, he'll hold on to it. If I give him to him, give it to him with, the, with his back to the defender, right in his back, he can manipulate the ball. The coach doesn't have that confidence in you. Are you now at that stage where you think that they know your range of talents and you think that because they know what you can do, you deserve that opportunity? Is the, are you there mentally? I, I feel like to be honest with you, I feel like on the ball, like on the ball, I don't feel like there's like no coach that has ever had a problem with me where that is concerned. You know, like my like my main problem is that 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 most people had with me. Um, if I may say that, like um, it's just like they said I need to do more defensive work, right? And like that's something I've been working on it a lot, but I feel like. In football nowadays, sometimes they, they like they have you focusing on one thing too much that like sometimes it takes away from your game, you know. And like you, you're not you're not yeah, you're not being like they're not allowing you to be yourself sometimes, you know. But like other than that, on the ball, yeah, even like when I'm training or stuff like that, you know. Yeah, on the ball, if there's I don't know four or five players behind me, that's still just to give me the ball and know that I'll not lose it or know that I'll make something happen for the team. Yeah. Let me ask you bluntly, for the time that you've been away, for the development that your the development path that your career has taken, right now at 23 years old on this day in sports, is Tariq McGee happy with where he is as a professional? No, I'm not happy at all. I'm nowhere near being like happy and, and I feel like I'm nowhere near being like where I, where I, where my potential can take me, you know, but like like I said earlier when I was talking about the when I was commenting on what Leon said, I feel like everyone's journey is, is different, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like whoever I might, I might I might I may want to feel sad or whatever, you know, but no one who really cares, you know, no one really cares about that. You just have to get on with it. And like like I said earlier, when you get the opportunity or when I get the opportunity I have to take it, you know, and even if I might feel like I do well and they feel like I don't do well, you know, whenever I get the next chance again after like prove myself again until they have no choice but to like play me week in, week out, you know. Yeah, you know, there 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 are a couple of things, perhaps two things, that players in your position do, uh, given how you say you are feeling right now. The frustration gets the better of them and they want to, you know, leave all this behind and go somewhere else where they can be comfortable, even at a lower level. While another player will say, well, you know what? Yes, I am frustrated, but I'm not giving up. I've reached this point on the ladder. I'm going to push to go higher. What is Tariq McGee thinking? Are you going to, you know, leave all this uh, pretty soon, get frustrated and finish with it? Or are you determined to make it given your talent? No, not at all. I, I don't think I, I don't have like this thing in me to like give up you know like growing up nothing was ever even easy for me so like you know i just like view this as another like stepping stone and whatever whatever comes in my way you know i just use it as like extra motivation and stuff like that you know but like i'm going to fight for anything that i want until until i cannot fight anymore you know 
have you had you know a heart to heart conversation because you know some coaches and their managing management style they talk to players players don't talk to them have you said to your coach look you know I, I think you should take a chance on me now you know I, I think we're at this stage I'm at this stage where I can give this team what you need in the position that I play. Have you had that conversation? Are you going to have that conversation? Would that conversation make a difference to your situation now with Yupin? Um, so, like, at the beginning of the season when I was playing, it, it was a different coach, you know, like, we just got a new coach again, like, since, yeah, since um, like last month, late last month. And um, so I'm just going to have to wait and, like, see what his plans are and stuff like that, you know. And then, like, if I feel like I'm not going to play as much, I'm going to, like, of course, I'm going to have a conversation with him, you know, and, like, it's only right to have a conversation with him, like, because I, I'll back myself 100%, you know, like, as long as I know I'm training properly and doing what I'm supposed to do, so, I'm going to have a conversation. So at this time, there, there, there's nothing yet where you're saying that, boy, you need to ask your agent to look at other opportunities for you. Because of this new coach just coming in, you want to give him a, a fair chance to have that conversation with you, to see where you are in his plans before you determine if you need to try and flourish somewhere else. Is what I'm hearing you say? Is, is that what I'm, what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, like, you have to remember, you know, like, whatever I'm feeling or whatever, I, I'm, still a, I'm, still a, I'm still a UPEN player, you know, so like, yeah, I have to just play until, like, my time here comes to an end. And, like, yeah, like you said, I have an agent and stuff like that. I just want to allow them to do to do their job, you know. And I don't really, like, like right now in this moment, I don't really want to speak about that too much, you know, because, like I said, I'm an, I'm a UPEN player right now. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah and, I, and, I'm, and I'm careful too. I, I don't want to drag you down the rabbit hole of commenting on your, on your contract and your tenure because I don't want any trouble with you and the, and the coach. I want the coach to play you every week, every game. So I don't want to give them an excuse to say, boy, blacklist this man. Let's talk about the national team. Are, are, you, are you happy being a reggae boy, looking at what the reggae boys have achieved with the talent at, at, at the disposal? When you look at the men who sit on the, uh, uh, sit, who are in training around you, the Baileys, the Morrisons, the Andre Blakes, the uh, Damian Lowe's, all of these guys, are you happy with where we are given the talent that is available to us? No, not at all. I feel like, like we should have achieved like so much more, like even the, the, the past World Cup campaign. I feel like there is no way like the World Cup should be going on right now, and, and like there's no way we shouldn't make it to the World Cup. I don't know, like with the if it's like with you're talking about with the players, there's no way, like with the quality we have, we should have like qualified for the World Cup 100. percent So what stopped us, uh, Tariq, from your perspective? What is it that caused the Jamaicans to be watching the World Cup on TV and not hearing the national anthem playing, not seeing the reggae boys out there strutting their stuff? What, what went wrong from your perspective? <sighs> Uh, uh, there's it's it's more than one stuff, man. I feel like uh, yeah, I don't want to comment on it. <laughs> All right, let me let me let me let me, let me, let me see if I can if I, if I can help you to to stay on the right path. You don't believe that it's a talent problem that Jamaica has. No, nah, I don't feel like it's that at all. Yeah, but but you think that organizationally things could have been done better to allow the talent to show its true worth as a unit for the reggae boys. You'd agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, 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 and are you, in this moment, concerned about your status as a reggae boy, given that you're not playing week in, week out? Are you wondering if, if you know, a new coach coming in, if he'll be looking at you, following your progress, are you anxious to be playing week in, week out for your club side so that the coach for the Jamaican team will have no choice but to look at you and give you those call-ups when he's assembling a national team? Yeah, man, definitely. One, yeah, I think about that, like, every day, like, even with the Gold Cup, like, coming up next year and stuff like that, you know, I'm always saying to myself, like, come January, I need to be, like, playing week up, week up, week in, week up, because I cannot, like, afford to miss the Gold Cup, you know, and I feel like, me personally, I have a point to, I have a point to prove to myself, you know, not, not to anyone else, you know, but, like, I have a point to prove to myself. Physically, mentally, Tariq McGee, where have you improved the most, you think, since you've been in Belgium? I'd say, I'd say both, you know. Yeah, I'd say, I've, I'd say that I've, maybe most, maybe more mentally, yeah. I'd say I've improved more mentally, but like, 
I've improved a lot physically as well, you know, like if you remember how I was like when I was playing Manning Cup and stuff like that, you know, I've improved like my body's, my body changed a lot and stuff like that, but mentally I feel like I'm, I'm super, super strong, you know, because like, like I said earlier, I've been, I've been through a lot here and, and, and I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it on my own as well, you know, I've always been living by myself and stuff like that, you know, so like, yeah, I'd say I've improved like tremendously um, mentally. Tactically, uh, Tyreek, I left that out of the other two because I know sometimes we watch some teams and we see some players getting starts week in, week out, and we're saying, but that player isn't as talented as that other player who gets a 10 minutes here, doesn't get a game there, gets another 10 minutes there. And sometimes you talk to a coach and he says, well, this player, I play this player every week because this player has a tactical understanding that helps the team to uh, implement its tactical plan. Uh, do you think that tactically your understanding of your role, your understanding of the game is at its highest level and that that's one of your strong points at this time of your development? Uh, I feel like tactically that's, that's, yeah, that's not one of my strong points, no, but like, that's one of the stuff that I focus on like, most of the times. You know, like, um, even in training, like, I ask, like, sometimes when I speak with the coach and stuff like that, I ask him, like, to just remind me, you know, sometimes so I can, so it can become a habit, you know. But I feel like tactically, where I, compared to where I was and where I am now, I've improved, like, so, so, like, so much, you know. It's not, like, at the best, but, you know, I feel like I can, I can play, like, play like this week in, week out, yeah. like, where I am. And you, me you, me you mentioned Shamara Nicholson earlier. He recently secured a big move uh, in his career, taking another giant step, leaving Belgium, going further afield to a, a team that has Champions League ambitions. You look at a guy like Ronaldo Cifas, who was at Arnett Gardens, uh, playing for Shukpi in North Macedonia, also flirting with Champions League qualification as well. Are you motivated to say, well, there are other guys as talented as me and they are making big moves, so there's a lot more to come from me and I'm not going to let this career die? Is that, is that how you think? Um, like I said, you know, I have a lot to prove to myself. You know, like, yeah, of course, I think like that, you know. I know myself more than anyone knows me, you know, so like, I know, I know what I can do and I know where, I'm, where I can go and I know where I'm supposed to like supposed to be like if I got the chance that I sh like I think I deserve you know but like yeah man I will not give up and I, of course I'm always motivated you know there's always something to like motivate me and stuff like that you know so like like I said earlier I'll just I'll, I'll be fighting until like I cannot fight more. Yeah well to follow up on that Tyreek um, Ravel Morrison your reggae boy teammate said in an interview a couple of years ago when he saw you playing first in training and then for Jamaica, that he was so impressed with your talent, he actually said that he thinks you are Premier League ability in, in England. Did he actually say that to you? And is that a part of your frustration, that some people see this in you, but at the moment your, your career is stagnating? Um, no, he's not really said it to me, you know, but like, um, he's always talking to me you know, and stuff like that and telling me, like, you know, just no matter what, just like keep going, you know, because he said to me like, yeah, you have everything to play at the highest level and stuff like that, you know, but like, he said to me, no matter how like dark it seems, you know, like your life can change in an instance, just one game and some, or something like that, you know. Yeah, that's that's what he says to me when, yeah. when we had a conversation about that. Tariq, you are, you're 23 years old, you have a lot of time left in this career, especially if you have luck with the injuries. So this is the early phase. I mean, many people have struggled and then they, they get a break and then they never look back. Uh, we want to wish you all the best. And uh, the determination that you speak of, um, um, if things work based on how you want it to work, uh, the league of your preference. Are you a, a Spanish league man or are you wanting to be in England where we're watching you week in, week out? Uh, if I was supposed to choose, I feel like I would love to play in Spain. There you go. Because many people would have assumed England would have to Spain because based on how you play the game, uh, I, I, I see a Spanish league, I see La Liga, the, the flair there. I see that more fitting uh, to your tastes and to what you can do. And, and, and you're saying that you'd prefer, if you, if you had to choose, La Liga over the EPL. Yeah, I would play La Liga 100%. Man. I feel like the players in La Liga, they're sick, man. Like, there's, some, there's some wicked players in La Liga. But yep. All right. I, I, I can't let you go without talking about the World Cup. Who's going to win it? 
Argentina is going to win the record now. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah you, you, are not, you are not one of those ball Jesus fans, Lionel Messi. <laughs> good choice, good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bef uh, just before you go, CR7 and what happened to him at Manchester United and how the club handled it, uh, who do you think is wrong for how that relationship broke up? The player or the club? Yeah, I'd have to say, I don't, I don't feel like I agree with how Ronaldo deal with the Abdel situation. I don't agree with it at all. I feel like, you know, he's, he's more than, like, professional enough to, like, just... Sometimes you just have to allow certain things, you know, allow people to speak, even when... Even if you know you're supposed to be playing, yeah, you're Christian Ronaldo or whatever, but... Like, if it's not going your way for, for once, you know, just accept it and, and get on with it, you don't need to, like... It's, speak about it with everyone and stuff like that final final thing to put to you Tariq four years from now 48 teams will assemble in Mexico the USA and Canada for the next FIFA World Cup is it your dream to start the first game for Jamaica's reggae boys in that midfield <laughs> I feel like that's that's any anyone's dream man any footballer from Jamaica dream of, of course man that's my dream and I feel like I'm, that's something I'm going to be working really hard and to make happen you know I'm to, I want to make myself and my family proud so yeah I feel like that's one of my main my main targets like short, like one of my main yeah, short term targets in my career yeah and and I, the reason I mentioned the US is because it's near here and it's enough for your noobs them from stand by side can yeah. come watch it you know what I mean. <laughs> Tyreek, we're out of time. All the best to you, my friend, and I hope that you and the adventure goes well and that you pick up from your kick on from here and that your, your immense talents gets the stage that it deserves. All the best to you, my brother. Very, thank you very much. All right, Tariq McGee, you pen in Belgium, mm. uh, the Jupiler League, and that's where he is. I like this guy. I've yeah. always liked him. Yeah. You know, there are some interviews where you interview players and you listen to the player and you could, one, feel how genuine they are. Two, you could feel what they've been through and the sacrifices that they've made. And I feel like this was one of those interviews. Mm. And of course, I hope that I live to see him play in La Liga for, mm -hmm. in Spain. Yeah, I couldn't help but put the Ravel Morrison situation to him, George, yeah. because you know Ravel experienced Manchester United. He played at West Ham and um, he'd been in England for a long time. Mm. So he knows a lot about English football. And for him to say what he said about Tyreek McGee, having seen his ball handling skills because that's what he pointed to yeah. his natural ball handling skills that he felt he had has the talent to play in the English Premier League and um, we heard the frustration from him just now because yeah. I think deep down he feels he needs to be at that level and right now he hasn't been in the squad for UPenn for the last 10 matches that they've played yeah. And he's getting very little playing time, so it has to be frustrating. And that's okay. After frustration comes the breakthrough. Here's the thing. I was very keen not to drag him, as I said, too far down the yes, rabbit hole of yes. Lupin. Because as I interview, as, as the questions flowed, I kept having in the back of my mind that interview that Walter Boyd gave when he was at West Bromwich Albion. <laughs> And how the world came tumbling down after that. And yeah. club, well, the club didn't yeah. sign him after yes. the interview aired. Yes. And then he and, had and Chris Gale's Simo's. interview on KLAS. Well, I wasn't even thinking about Chris Gale, but Walter <laughs> Boy's world came yeah. crashing down after that interview. So I was very careful, yes. you know, but when I normally... Good be, on you, yeah, George. There he goes. Yeah. I, I, but but I, I really hope... Look, the reason people love Tyreek McGee in Jamaica is because he possesses the skills mm -hmm. as a midfielder that we haven't seen the midfield in a long time. Jermaine Hugh had those skills. Yeah. Theodore Whitmore had those skills. Yeah. I mean, Whitmore took it to the highest level. Yes. Hugh took it to a reasonably high level. McGee has the raw materials to be that man in the middle of the field who can, we, we call him in the streets, we call them the pullers. They can pull a defense apart centrally. He's yeah. a wonderful talent. Yeah. I really hope that he, he, he goes on from here. It would be a shame yeah. if, a, if a man as good as he is mm -hmm. can't make it at the very, very top level. It would be a shame. Yeah. Yep. Break time here on the Sportsman. So I'm back with more after this.